European Commission has launched a very strong promotion of circular economy as a model of development for the European Union. Angel, welcome back. Can you start off by telling us what are the areas of circular economy that we can invest in? Yeah, thanks for having me here. In terms of investment, there are quite a few areas in circular economy that in recent years have picked up. One of them is clean tech. Clean tech is kind of notorious amongst investors because uh, it had a pretty big collapse in, in uh, the mid 2000s, whereby quite a lot of businesses simply went bankrupt despite having received you know, hundreds of millions of dollars of, of investment. The problem was that it was the first age of clean tech. It was a very innovative area, very promising, but also untested. It wasn't mature. So it created a kind of big you know, bubble and then bust. And right now it's re-emerging again, but as a lot with a lot more maturity. So they're you know they're not making uh, claims that are no longer consistent. There's a big scientific base behind them, and they're actually looking at connecting environmental uh, values with economic services. So, for example, they look at you know whether people are ready to pay extra to have a better quality of air or water, and that's something that a lot of people are prepared to do. I mean, one of the most interesting cases is China, where, you know, in the uh, 10 years ago, China was kind of the bad boy of environment. Everybody was pointing fingers at China, saying that, oh, China doesn't care about the environment. Look at China today. It's, uh, it's one of the champions of solar panels and, you know, clean energy, etc. because they've had a big enough uh, sector of people who've entered the middle class, and they said, okay, now I have, I own an iPhone, I have a car, I have a flat, what else do I want for myself and my family? Clean air. So they actually, clean tech managed to create demand from the middle classes. The other parts are waste management, uh, due to the reasons we discussed, but with specific focus on e-waste. So, uh, for example, as this case in India and in other South and Southeast Asian countries, e-waste recycling is very important because they, reco they recover a lot of precious metals from electronics and appliances. And on average, one of those old computers will have maybe around four, five grams of gold in it also two or three grams of tungsten and other rare metals that are used for industrial purposes. So as noted, there could be a lot of uh, you know, wealth created there, especially if you look at those recycling sectors that target the areas with very rare metals. So there, is, uh, there are quite a few appliances, for example, quartz watches. Mm -hmm. They will have some elements that could be interesting to look at. And lastly, it's uh, the resource efficiency sectors. So the resource efficient businesses that optimize supply chains for larger corporations, they could be the, another interesting solution. And are you expecting discussions to continue between different stakeholders on investing in circular economy? Definitely, there is a big push at multiple levels for the uh, um, for the investment in the circular economy. There has been uh, quite a few developments at the European Union level, actually, whereby the uh, European Commission has launched a very strong promotion of circular economy as a model of development for the European Union. Some countries are closer on track to achieve it, uh, mainly Nordic countries and uh, Northwestern Europe. Others are still struggling, but overall on the EU level, they're holding regular working group meetings. And the, um, the other global meeting that is coming up soon is the World Resources Forum Latin America and the Caribbean. That will take place back to back with the International Sustainable Building Congress in Costa Rica this May. And the focus of that conference will be uh, you know, to continue on the initial momentum they've created at Davos and to see how specifically circular economy could be adopted at urban scale in sustainable cities, construction and infrastructure sector. And they will have specific working groups talking about the incentives for the financial sector to enter, because that's been the, last, uh, the largest struggle so far, not just the corporate sector, but actually the financial institutions to enter this process. And in Costa Rica, there'll be a particular emphasis on engaging the financial sector for them to provide their inputs on how their current framework, how their due diligence strategies, how their fiduciary duties fit into this uh, process of investing in the circular economy. So we will definitely have a lot of you know, outcomes from there, which we can follow up on. Absolutely. Well, Angel, thank you so much for coming in today and sharing your insights with us. You're welcome. Well, that's all for myself and Angel. But for all the latest Ducascopy updates and exclusive market moves, do keep clicking back. But for now, it's goodbye.